Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and guests to St. Michael's Catholic Church as we be gathered for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Please rise now to begin our celebration. St. Michael, angel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking their own souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was on one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that they had any possessions who was his own. But they had even had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great favor was accorded to them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Thanks to the Lord. 
I was hard pressed in falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. A reading from the letter of St. John, first letter of St. John, beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ he begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is a victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first week, day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into his nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> As we celebrate this uh, second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, I remind you that this afternoon at 2 o'clock from 2 to 3.30, we'll have adoration of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. <clears throat> we'll have five priests here available for confessions this afternoon. And during adoration, we'll have some devotions, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, of course, and the Rosary. And you're all welcome to join us. <clears throat> they finish at um, 3.30 with ice cream sundaes. So, let people know in the family who are able to join us. Look forward to seeing you then. And this morning we have a video. So throughout the diocese, we're starting, uh, well, some parishes have already done it at the last, uh, at the end of fall and beginning of this year, the Capital Campaign Fund Drive. And uh, so we can begin ours this weekend with the video. And the next week will be our presentation from our committee members. And then the third weekend will be our commitment weekend. Um, if you've already seen the video before, I hope you like it as much as I do. One of the major stars in it is myself. Yay! Um, it was a lot of fun, actually, when they put this together, because I had no idea that I would be in this thing. They went around, they interviewed tons of peace, priests around the diocese. You'll see Monsignor Pilon in there as well, because they're interviewing uh, our retired priests. I found out, much to my surprise, there's over 30 priests who are over 60 years of age. And so that's a big part of the Capital Campaign Fund Drive is the, um, uh, to raise money for a retirement home for our priests. And um, the second part of the, it is for our retreat house that the sisters just gave to us last year in Valley City, uh, Maryvale as we call it. And uh, that is part of the Capital Campaign Fund Drive to uh, help to run it and to uh, update the building. It's been, uh, I don't think there's been any changes in it since they built it uh, many, many decades ago. And I think we just figured out that <clears throat> while the priests don't mind having these little cells at the retreat house and having a big bathroom at the end of the hallway, they said we couldn't do that with married couples. They probably wouldn't like having a common bathroom. So that's one of the things they're going to do is put in suites and so forth to make it possible for married couples to come on these retreats. Is it, uh, give me the signal on the lights. I'm, I'm not sure if it's ready yet. No. Deacon John, thank you so much for, for setting this up for us. I appreciate it. I know that whenever I touch these machines, they don't seem to work for me. And, uh, you know, we practice it before mass. Hey, it worked. And then mass starts and you hit the button. It's like, uh-oh. Last night we got to see a movie from Netflix. So I'm hoping we get the video today, this time. <clears throat> and of course, the uh, third leg of our capital campaign fund drive is for the parish here. So we've got it going. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to invite you to join with me today in hearing some information about our diocesan campaign, living our faith, building our future. This is a time of need and a time of opportunity for our diocese. We've been given many, many gifts in our spiritual lives, in our life as a church, and we have many opportunities going forward. The campaign is an opportunity for all of us as a diocesan family to enter more deeply into the life of faith that we've been given and to work more fervently to pass that faith along to others. Priests hate raising money. It's the thing I look forward to not doing in life. But at the same time, it's one of those ways that we're able to share in the mission of the church in a different way. That's very important. 
to be able to look at that and say, this is what my money did, or I was able to contribute towards that. I think it's it's very important. Uh, my dad's always planting trees. And dad was planting a tree and it was a skinny type of thing. And I'm like, why are you even planting that tree? It's gonna take 30 years for you to get any shade out of it. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not planting it for me. So I invite you now to spend a few minutes with me to learn more about the different aspects of this campaign so that going forward, we truly can live our faith and build our future. In my years as Bishop of the Diocese of Fargo, I've had the opportunity to visit every single one of our parishes. And I've been inspired by the wonderful things that I see happening in our parishes. And I've come to realize that in order for us to have a strong diocese, we have to have strong parishes. And that's why the largest portion of this campaign will be what we call the parish share, because all of our parishes have needs. We don't have a full-time staff in these small parishes, and so any way that we can receive extra help from the diocese to have support in raising funds that we need to fix our beautiful churches in these rural areas is a huge help and support. There's lots of things that I think could be maybe helpful, uh, computers and maybe aids to help uh, ministry kinds of things. And, and maybe, you know, uh, continuing education, kind of parish education kinds of things where just practical needs in some of these parishes are things that need to get done. <laughs> we have a church to paint. We have, pa we have peeling paint and so forth, and so that's going to be a big project for us. So it's nice that we'll be able to blend that together with the diocesan appeal. In the past year, the Diocese of Fargo received an incredible gift. The Sisters of Mary of the Presentation gave their mother house, called Maryvale, to the diocese for continued use as a retreat center. Maryvale is a beautiful facility located north of Valley City. It's a place where people over the years have gone for retreats, for times of spiritual reflection and growth, and we hope to build up Maryvale as an even greater resource for the spiritual growth and for the work of evangelization in our diocese. Our hope is that through this campaign, we can carry out some important updates to the facility and make it even more inviting to all the people of our diocese. The retreat center primarily needs renovation and repairs to the guest rooms. Many of them need to be updated and reconfigured to accommodate married couples. Things like adding restrooms and showers to each the center also needs structural adjustments and updates to the electrical, plumbing, and lighting systems, as well as replacement of existing doors, windows, kitchen appliances, and equipment. We wanted the ministry here at Maryvale to be more robust. We wanted there to be more retreats. We wanted more people to come and to experience a relationship with Jesus Christ firsthand. When I served as chaplain on search retreats, it was just amazing to see how the youth would come sort of timid, cautious, and how the retreat would change them, make them joyful, confident. For me, one of the cool things about CERT was it brought so many kids from around the state together in one place, people that you didn't always know, but the one thing we always had in common was our Catholic faith. Yes, the power of endowment gives stability. Basically, we're saying this is an amount of money that we don't touch, that we use the interest from. Um, we're basically saying we're making a long-term commitment. And the sisters made a long-term commitment to us. In addition to the gift of the facilities, they have a gift of $4 million for the endowment. And so now it's our, t our turn as a diocese to do our part to make sure that that's completely successful. Thirty years ago, the Diocese of Fargo carried out its last diocesan capital campaign to establish and fund a retirement plan for our retired priests. That plan is still in place and is still functioning exactly as it should, but the needs are growing. We presently have over 30 priests who are over the age of 60, and so our retirement needs for our priests will grow as the years go on. Our capital campaign will build up our retirement plan and make sure that we have adequate coverage for the needs of our priests as they enter into and live through their retirement years. We also hope to establish a residence for our retired priests where they can choose to live if they wish, where their needs will be met, where they'll have an opportunity to live in community, and where they can still serve our diocese in any way they choose. As a priest, I have to tell you, when I was ordained 30 years ago, I could not believe 
that there's no retirement home for priests. So I'm thinking, well, what do we do? Uh, they, you know, they get lost in an apartment someplace. I've been in enough apartment buildings to see that that, that could be a real problem. Um, and they might not have much community with one another. But it seems to me that as, as maybe guys get a little older and health issues become a little more uh, uh, a problem for them, I think there might be something they want to be closer to kind of medical facilities. So I do think that retirement home is, is something good. And that would be such a great thing knowing that, hey, they've got something set up. They've got a place where we can go and, uh, and to live. It'll be here on the grounds shared with the Pastoral Center, Saints Anne and Joachim Church, Sacred Heart Middle School, and Shanley High School. It'll include eight apartments with garages, communal living space containing a chapel, kitchen, dining, laundry, guest and office areas. One of the things that I have had the opportunity to observe is how much these men all love Mother Church and are so willing to give of themselves. It is our duty and responsibility, and it should be our love, to want to make sure that they have what they need after all of those years. Brothers and sisters, I would invite you to join me in praying for the success of our diocesan campaign living our faith, and building our future. As we work together as a diocesan family to address the needs of our parishes, to address the needs of our retired priests, and to take advantage of the opportunities that we have to build our spiritual lives, every contribution that you make will make a difference. So again, please pray with me for the success of this campaign. Pray how our Lord might be asking you to participate and let us together join in the work of our diocesan family living our faith, building our future. I have extra prayer cards here if anyone doesn't have them. I think they're still in the pews. I know some people took them home. We'll pray this at the end of Mass this morning. <clears throat> Since our video basically takes the time we would have our homily, I want to just thank you for your attention and, uh, and pray for your support for the, uh, the three main things that we're doing in this uh, Capital Campaign Fund Drive. Um, at the end of Mass, I'll invite Christine Goodwin to come up from Gu Guidance and Giving, who's helping us uh, organize and execute this uh, capital campaign fund drive, which is off to a great start already. I forget how much we've already, we're over $200,000 at St. Michael's here already. So is it a quarter of a million yet? It's over. So we'll do that uh, at the end of Mass. And um, one thing I just want to share with you to, to take home with you, something that I think it's a great time to think about right after celebrating the resurrection because it's something that um, I think because of the resurrection helps give us the power to do something I think sometimes that we think we're powerless to do. And that's very simply this. It's an adage from St. Ignatius of Loyola. And he said something that as a good Christian, we should always give the best interpretation. So whatever happens in life, instead of pointing our thing, fingers and getting angry and saying and grumbling and mumbling, to find something positive uh, about what may have happened. I like the example in my own life. <clears throat> um, ten years ago when I was in Fargo at St. Anthony's, driving in traffic, I might be cut off by a, another motorist. And my first thought was not pleasant ones. I'm getting angry and have some words I would not say out loud uh, going through my head. And, or if I'm talking to my car saying, you know, call the office, and it says, make some coffee, you know, it would never listen to what I'm actually saying. It would come up with his own thing. It was kind of useless, and I'd get very angry inside. And, and it was a sign to me. It's like, hold it. Why am I angry? Why am I mad? It's like, I'm not giving the best interpretation. Um, so I started doing that. And of course, it's challenging. But I think because of the resurrection of our Lord from the dead, 
it helps us to see that, no, this is something that's unbelievable, that Jesus rose from the dead. And because that happened, anything is possible. We trust in God's grace in such a way that we can know that, Lord, by myself, I can't do it. With your grace, anything is possible. And so it was a great challenge to me, and I, and I, you know, it's not something that's gone away. It's something I still have to do every day. But it's great. Now if I see someone uh, racing down the freeway or whatever, I, first thing is I say a prayer and think, well, you know, maybe that guy's in such a hurry because their uh, spouse or their child or somebody got in an accident, and they're in the hospital, and they're racing to get there. You know, to come up with a good um, and positive interpretation, the best interpretation, what if that was me racing to the hospital, which I've had to do on a few occasions. In fact, it reminds me of one case. Uh, I came into confessions about 15 minutes late, and um, someone was mumbling and grumbling and lying, and, you know, the darn priest wears his court right, you know, that guy's sleeping in or something, who knows, you know, and they're all angry and upset, and and I said, well, it's a good thing you're in line for confession now because you need it. But, you know, when they found out, hey, I just came from the hospital because one of our parishioners just died. I got an emergency call to go there. So it's like, you know, I wasn't just sleeping in. And, you know, it would be one of those cases where there's the best interpretation. And even if I do sleep in, I think you could at least say, well, maybe Father was at the emergency room this morning from 3 to 5 a.m. with one of our families, you know. So it's, things happen. It's just it helps ourselves to always find what's the best interpretation and say a prayer. You know, make all these events in our lives something that draws closer to our Lord instead of letting anger well up in our hearts, okay? So as we continue this, as we begin our second week now, the Easter season, let's uh, take that to heart and try to make that something in our lives as we thank our Lord for the gift of the resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, (coughs) and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with confidence, let us offer now our prayers of petition. That the Church may continue to grow in charity and faith, that she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing to the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the Third Synod of the Diocese of Fargo. May the Holy Spirit inspire our prayer, preparation, and discussions, and bless the Church in our diocese with the outpouring of His graces. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, especially Vern Dondino, Marvin Burris, and Randy Farmer, as well as George, Sophie, and Sai Wasaki, for whom this Mass is offered. May these and all who have died rejoice forever with all the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in the Book of Our Intentions and for those that we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, in whom we live and move and have our very being, grant us every petition we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. You will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask we please with the sacrifice of the blood and our hearts. O Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, 
that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your holy. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John Fulda, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. With my back, you may give your teachings. And never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Christi, custodia, pain, vitam eternum.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> I want to introduce and welcome uh, Christine Goodwin, <clears throat> who will be here this uh, morning after the Masses to answer any questions that you may have on the uh, Capital Campaign Fund Drive, and, uh, and who actually knows more about what's going on with it than I do. And maybe you could speak a word about what's the most recent um, update. Just so you know, there's 128 parishes in the Fargo Diocese, and the first group already did the campaign uh, at the end of last year. We're in the second group, and there'll be a third group doing the end of this year. And so we're the, we've already seen the success of other parishes at this point. I am very happy when I found out that St. Anne and Joachim went uh, $500,000 over their goal, right? Is that true? So, yeah. welcome. Oh. Thank you. Yes, so you are in the second block of parishes. The first block, 32 parishes, collectively are at 117% of their goals, so they did extremely well. Um, and I asked them to do the same thing I'm going to ask of you today, which is in the next couple weeks, you're going to receive an information packet in the mail, and I ask you to read it over, to pray about it, to think about it, and to consider what your sacrifice can look like. We know this is above and beyond our offertory and above and beyond our God's gift to peel. It is our sacrificial gift. And if each of us sacrifice just what we can, then we will to collectively with the rest of the diocese be able to fund our retired priests, our Maryvale Retreat Center, and of course, right here at home at St. Michael's, some much needed projects. So I will be in the back of church after Mass today. I invite you to come by, ask me questions, find out what's going on. As Father alluded to, we, are, uh, we have raised over $250,000 towards our goal already, which is amazing. And we hope in a couple weeks that you all will add to that and help us get to our goal. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Is our goal still just shy of $1.3 million? $1.2 million. <clears throat> we can do that. Also, this, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, that we'll have our Divine Mercy uh, Sunday celebration at 2 o'clock this afternoon to 3.30. We'll have confessions. We'll pray some of the devotions, the Divine Mercy Chapel, of course. And at 3.30, we'll finish off with a uh, ice cream Sundays. And also, Tuesday after next, the 23rd of April, you're invited to join us for the Bridge Builders uh, Banquet. <clears throat> this year, Chef Liz will be cooking for us. It's only $15 a meal. I would go just because it's a $100 meal and it's 15 bucks. It's for families, bring your kids. It's not a fundraiser. It's a celebrating the work that the Bridge Builders do every year. And for those of you who forgot, the Bridge Builders is the group that was started 50 years ago. <clears throat> I think Deacon John was one of the first people on the Bridge Builder Committee, and it was set up to help fund the church. So they have their own fundraising uh, goals and stuff that they do. So you're welcome to come join us for that dinner. In fact, uh, Chef Liz will not be happy if there's under 100 people because sh she loves to cook for big groups. So please join us. And I invite you to grab the uh, prayer for the uh, Living Our Faith, Building Our Future campaign. In the pew there, or maybe at the end of the pew, there should be a copy of one. <coughs> I invite you to pray together with me. Before we go this morning, God our Father, you are the source of all goodness and of every blessing under heaven. We give you praise and thanks for the gift of our Catholic faith and for more than 200 years living and witnessing to that faith in North Dakota. We ask for your blessings upon your church in the Diocese of Fargo as we strive to live the gospel and look to the future. May your people respond with hope and generosity to living our faith, building our future campaign. With thanksgiving for all we have received, may the sacrifices we make together now bear fruit in lives of faith for generations to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, 
the archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, all about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to Divine Mercy Sunday. Please join with me as we pray the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. <clears throat> 